Hello, my name is Lor and I work at the Anti-Racism Movement, a non-governmental organization that works hand-in-hand -hand with migrant workers to advocate for changes in the systems that perpetuate racist discrimination and abuse in Lebanon. Building on our philosophy that recognizes the importance of community building work, we created the Migrant Community Centers, which grew from one small center in 2011 in Beirut to centers in three major cities in Lebanon by 2016. The MCC's mission is to make meaningful improvements in the lives of migrant workers and their capacity to self-advocate, advance their socio-economic rights, and contribute to a strong and powerful migrant society with a focus on women as leaders of change. It's a place that migrant workers can go and uh, learn uh, language, learn about computers. And this is uh, important. Education is important. <laughs> سواء كان رحلة أو برنامج أو ما شابه ذلك والام سي سي بتدفع الموضوع للجهات اللي بتدعم البرنامج. Maybe I want to do my birthday or my my party or something for me. I can come and do in this place. يعني خلاص this is our home, you know. You as a foreigner for the first time in Lebanon, you have your own house freely without uh, any account. The MCCs are free and safe spaces tailored to migrant domestic workers and their communities and evolving according to their needs, where they can meet, learn new skills, work together and access information, resources and assistance. Anti-racism movement has less than 20 staff members and over 30 volunteers and 400 members. MCC members, most of whom are migrant domestic workers, represent more than 14 countries including Ethiopia, Sri Lanka, Sudan, and the Philippines. The people who come here, they are gifted. Many people have different kind of talents that if you see what they do, I mean, you go like, wow. You give them a chance to, to explore what they want, what they believe, their strengths. And uh, really, we are grateful for MCC. When MCC started, it's the first time that uh, I invited a place that they said this house is for you. Yes, this uh, 20 years I'm here, there's far more different between the 17 years past and these three years. Yeah, these three years, really I feel that I have my own home. This is our house. We are helping each other. Every people are our sisters and brothers in this house. Thank you. Hi, my name is Rasha Shaban. I'm working as projects manager and coordinator of the Annalyn Foundation Network at the World Culture Museum in Gothenburg, which is part of four national museums of world culture in Sweden. I'm here today to talk to you about our project EHOP. EHOP is a creative project that aims at creating a dialogue platform to facilitate integration between newcomers and local community members in Gothenburg. We use digital storytelling to facilitate this integration process that went both ways, actually. One of my favorite quotes, uh, art is not necessarily about creating change, but about responding. We were trying with this project to respond to the so-called refugee crisis. Uh, Sweden was one of the countries that received the largest number of asylum applications in 2015 per capita. There were a lot of newcomers who came to Sweden and one of the main complaints we would hear is we cannot meet Swedish people, we don't know how we can meet Swedish people. Uh, so we decided to use EHOP for this. We wanted to bring people together, we want them to share stories to know each other apart from the conflict and apart from numbers and apart from what is written on the news. Uh, so we did actually, we conducted two rounds of digital storytelling in 2017. We recorded 26 stories. Each story is one minute long and you can find them on YouTube if you look by typing EHOP Gothenburg Storytelling. Watch the stories. They are really worth hearing. ثماني رمضان يوم معجزة بحياتي. ب 2013 كان الأسوأ، 
كان حرب بسوريا وكان اليوم اللي بخسر فيه شغلي مضوا ثلاث سنين خلالهم كل يوم عشته بالامل ما عادت معني رمضان بطلت حبه انتقلت على غير بلد وحصلت على فرصه ثلاث شهور تدريبيه بشركه الشهر الثاني منهم كمان صدفه رمضان باليوم الثامن منه ب 2016 فقت خايفه كثير ومتوتره ما بدي اروح على الشغل بس رحت طبعا بوصل لاقيهم كانه عم يستنوني بيقولوا لي الشركه قررت توقف فترتك التدريبيه لو ما خلصت ثلاث شهور تبعك لانك ابديتي شيء غير متوقع كمتدربه كانت لحظه صدمه شمود بعدين بيقولوا لي صدر قرار توظيفك خلاصه ثمانية رمضان يوم محبب عندي كثير الامل موجود بس نامن انه هو عن جد موجود support our project share the stories make these voices heard and work for integration and work on changing stereotypes work on changing misconceptions work on bringing people together this is what we need the most bring people together so that we overcome any prejudices or any xenophobia our project is with the support of creative europe program and the swedish ministry of foreign affairs thank you very much Hi everybody, uh, this is Arifur Rahman, I'm the Chief Executive of Young Power in Social Action in Brief Ipsha. Uh, this organization we started in 1985, it was an international youth year. So it was started as a youth organization, but in course of time, organization evolved as a one of the biggest, vibrant, active social development organization in the southeastern part of Bangladesh. And our headquarters is in Chiragong. Uh, IPSA, we have a special consultative status with the Economic, uh, Social and Economic uh, Council of United Nations, ECOSOC, and our pro programs are focuses on uh, some specific theme, economic development, health, education, good governance, human rights, and uh, disaster management. Uh, under this theme, uh, IPSA, we implemented different types of projects and programs uh, based on the community need, based on the situation, based on the vulnerability and the challenges. Organization at the moment we are serving for nine million people in the who uh, the people who lives in the coastal area in the Chiragong hill tracks and the urban suburban areas. Uh, our organization we are supported by the Bangladesh government and also some of the international organization UN agencies as well as the community grants and some of the private foundations. If as an organization we have some values. So one of our core values is the respect for diversity. Whatever is our policy, what is our our program, we always try to. Uh, involve, include, and then give leadership to the different uh, all walks of life. In our organization, there are the people with disability, the people in vulnerability, ethnic ethnic groups, and the people who have uh, you know the different types of uh, discrimination. They uh, join in our organization, and when we work with them, so in a nutshell, the inclusion and the respect for diversity. This is like a one of our organizational core values. Different survivors. They are the part of, they are the active part of the, our organization. They are in the leadership, they are in the programs. So through this way, we ensure the inclusions uh, within the, our organization at the top level to the uh, micro level to the uh, macro level. So now I can come to the uh, points, uh, actually what we are doing specifically for the uh, genophobia and then inclusion areas. Uh, one of our major program is the safe migration. A promotion of the safe migration uh, within the community and within the country and also protection and preventional uh, programs on the uh, human trafficking issues uh, also we have we run the different specific programs with the survivors uh, so through this way uh, we contribute at the preventional uh, arena at the same time also the protection arena IPSHA ambitions a society where everyone basic needs and rights are ensured with this vision IPSHA is trying to contribute in the safe orderly migration program or related initiatives and our dream is through this initiative IPSHA is facilitating to achieve our organizational vision at the same time also contributing to the sustainable development goal as disease 2030. My name is Mortez. 
I am the Director of Community Outreach Program at St. Andrew's Refugee Services. My name is Wafa. I am the Director of St. Social Services. I am a refugee from Syria. I am a refugee from Sudan. SARS is a service provider in Cairo, working to improve the quality of life of refugees. Crowds of refugees gather every morning for a ticket to talk to someone from STARS about their problems. There are around 224,000 refugees registered with UNHCR Egypt, primarily from Eritrea, Ethiopia, Iraq, Somalia, South Sudan, Sudan, Syria and Yemen. Life is very difficult for most. Many can't afford rent or medical care. Many are SGBV survivors and many children are here without their parents. Over 200 people at STARS assist refugees with education, legal aid, psychosocial needs, and in supporting community organizations. Around 80% of those people come from forcibly displaced populations themselves. Refugees are not just our teachers and psychosocial case workers, but also our directors and team leaders. Uh, my name is Sadar, I'm from South Sudan and I'm a refugee here in Egypt. And really, the story is an amazing organization. As refugees, some of the people that receive us like we are a problem makers, but definitely refugees are ready to solve problems and refugees are ready really to contribute to any society. They are ready, ready to do great jobs that people expect them to do. Placing refugees at the center of response to their problems is key to addressing the situation of mass movement in the world today. Refugees have the best knowledge of challenges faced by other refugees. They also stay in Egypt for much longer than their international co-workers and grantees sustainability. We see refugees as equal partners who have an active role to play in protecting themselves. Refugee communities in Egypt do most of the actual work in helping refugees, even in emergency situations like when someone is homeless. But the communities don't get recognition or support. So working with the communities basically means that we know the protection risk they are facing and that allows us to respond quicker and uh, also react in a more efficient way. Because so many refugees help other refugees at start, we have strong connection with these communities. Refugees from different countries working together can help challenge stereotypes and reduce violence. By addressing problems in their on communities, refugees can help improve relationships with the refugees' communities and with the host country. STARS' vision is a safe and inclusive environment for refugees in which they can advocate for their rights, pursue their aspiration, and live in dignity. Bonjour, notre association c'est Conseil des migrants subsahariens au Maroc. Le président s'appelle Sekou Keita. Il est le garant de l'association. Il veille à, aux activités de l'association et il représente l'association partout et il convoque l'Assemblée générale. Nous sommes basés au Maroc et nous sommes 17 membres actifs dans l'association. Pour les programmes de mise en œuvre pour lutter contre la xénophobie, nous avons pensé à créer un groupe de théâtre pour faire les activités socio-culturelles et de vivre ensemble. Le caractéristique démographique de la population que nous ciblons, c'est les migrants en général et le migrant subsaharien en particulier. Euh, d'origine guinéenne, camerounaise, malienne, togolaise, burkinabé, ivoirienne, 
sénégalaise, béninoise, congolaise, RDC congolaise euh, de, Congo, euh, de, de Brazzaville, et tchadienne, centrafricaine, nigériane et niger, nigérienne. Pour le nombre de familles ou bien de personnes que nous servons, bon, ça, ça dépend de la situation. Euh, comme dernièrement, euh, au niveau de Casablanca, nous avons euh, servi euh, 850 migrants qui dorment dehors, euh, euh, à côté de la gare routière de Casablanca. Bon, les migrants que nous servons, chacun a son histoire. Il y a des autres, ils ont fui la guerre. Il y a des autres, le mariage forcé. Il y a les autres, euh, le trait d'être humain. Il y a les autres, la famine. Il y a les autres, la pauvreté. Donc, euh, chacun donne euh, son histoire. Bon, pour le temps, il y a d'autres qui ont fait 6 ans ici, il y a d'autres 12 ans, il y a d'autres 6 mois, il y a d'autres 2 ans, il y a d'autres 1 mois. Donc, euh, ça dépend des cas et puis euh, ça dépend de trajectoire. Bon, on, il y a d'autres qui ont fait 2 ans, 3 ans, euh, voilà. Par rapport à l'intolérance, euh, nous avons pensé euh, que la langue... La langue est très importante dans un pays d'accueil parce que si, une, si tu ne comprends pas la langue, ça crée euh, l'incompréhension. Donc l'incompréhension, donc euh, à la fin, c'est c'est pas bien. C'est ainsi, euh, nous, au sein de, de l'association Conseil des migrants, on a créé, depuis 2015, on a fait euh, le théâtre intitulé « Nous sommes tous les immigrés ». Donc, on a joué cette pièce, il y avait les Marocains, il y avait euh, des migrants subsahariens, il y avait euh, des migrants euh, qui résident en France, à Belgique, en Tunisie. Ils sont venus ici, nous avons travaillé ensemble euh, pour dire à tout le monde que nous sommes tous les immigrés. Bon, les pratiques réussies, nous... C'est nous, on va vers les migrants. On n'attend pas que les migrants viennent vers nous. Nous, on va vers eux, dans la forêt, partout. Donc, on les assiste, on les oriente. Euh, c'est ça, quoi. C'est ça, notre force, quoi. Bon, pour témoigner, euh, il y avait une fille camerounaise qui souffrait de, du cancer. On l'avait assisté, on l'avait orienté à la chair. Aujourd'hui, gloire à Dieu, il est, elle est maintenant aux États-Unis. On l'a opérée, donc euh, elle vit jusqu'à aujourd'hui. Donc c'est vraiment une réussite que nous, euh, le Conseil des migrants, avait fait. Euh, maintenant, pour le moment, on travaille euh, à la plateforme des associations. On a créé un réseau et puis euh, voilà, on cherche des bailleurs qui vont nous soutenir. Merci beaucoup. Hi, I'm Vasily Sofiadelis. I'm the founder of Changemakers Lab. Uh, we are based here in wonderful Greece. Our organization has uh, about five people, one person that is full-time. Uh, we run several programs focused on bringing locals and refugees together. Uh, the one focus area is an incubation project, which we ran, we ran together with the University of the Aegean. Uh, another program we have is the Changemakers Summit, where we bring people from all around the world so we can co-create sustainable and impactful tech solutions. And another initiative is focused on skills development and on empowering locals and refugees. Once again together, which is the Refugee Code Week. We had over 460 people that participated in that. Um, we first trained the locals and thereafter the locals would train the refugees. And we really feel that, that uh, integration and creating awareness is a key focus area for us. Uh, we, the people are from all ages, from unaccompanied minors right through to whatever age person that is interested to come to participate. Uh, the majority of the refugees here have been based here for about a year. They've left their countries about three years ago. Uh, the main reason that they leave is the war. Uh, the majority of the people are from Syria, Afghanistan, uh, Iraq, uh, Democratic, Democratic Republic of Congo, um, and many other countries. I believe in total is there are over 60 ethnicities that are currently here. Um, so uh, the situation here currently is very, very concerning uh, here on Lesbos, Greece. Uh, the reason being is that people are not allowed to leave from the island. More importantly, 75% of the population in this beautiful city is, uh, sorry, 25% of the population on this city is uh, currently refugees or asylum seekers. And so that's causing a lot of um, 
uh, uh, resistance from the local population. Uh, you can imagine if one in every four people is a refugee, it causes a lot of uncertainty in people's daily lives. Uh, in addition, the tourism industry has been very adversely affected uh, because the perception is that uh, you know, this place is full of refugees and it's unsafe. And um, I hope you guys can see what you can't really see here, but there's absolutely nothing to worry about. But it's the whole thing about the perception and the awareness. And this is one of the focus areas that we're working on to be able to share that this is actually an opportunity for people who want to have impact to come here to visit and to also support the local people who've been going through an economic crisis and currently through the refugee crisis. So we would really like to find ways where we can invite people to come and visit here in addition for Europeans to, to recognize that this is an opportunity for them to be able to get amazing people that they could welcome uh, into their countries uh, and uh, provide an opportunity for them to carry on with their daily lives and contribute to society. And um, we're going to be having our Europe Day event here again on 9th of May to celebrate European values and we would welcome the opportunity for any of you to come and participate in our events and also to come and uh, see uh, the wonder and meet the wonderful locals and the refugees. Uh, thank you very much for this opportunity and uh, please do contact me if there's any way that we could assist. Thank you. Amunra es una asociación civil sin fines de lucro, totalmente apartidaria. La integran mujeres migrantes de distintas nacionalidades. Mi nombre es Natividad Obeso, soy presidente de la organización. Amunra está compuesta por una directiva de 13 mujeres migrantes de distintas nacionalidades, socias y voluntarias, voluntarios y pasantes que continuamente nos llegan a la institución. Nuestro trabajo contra la xenofobia y la exclusión social lo implementamos en Ciudad de Buenos Aires y Gran Buenos Aires. Hola, mi nombre es Pamela Vargas, soy migrante latinoamericana de Bolivia. Soy trabajadora social. Nuestra mejor herramienta para poder combatir la xenofobia y la exclusión social es nuestra carta itinerante por los derechos de las mujeres migrantes, refugiadas y sus familias en Argentina. Nos instalamos en hospitales, eh, en plazas, nos instalamos en consulados y en villas o asentamientos de barrios vulnerables. Ahí nosotros brindamos información sobre los derechos y el proceso regulatorio de las personas migrantes. Vemos que las áreas donde se experimentan más la xenofobia y la exclusión social son en el campo laboral, con las trabajadoras, mujeres horticultoras, campesinas, vendedoras ambulantes y trabajadoras textiles. En cuanto al acceso a la salud, enfrentan diferentes situaciones por problemas de comunicación generadas por barreras lingüísticas y o culturales. Respecto a la educación, enfrentan serias limitaciones en cuanto al acceso a los cupos de las instituciones educativas. Y por último, y no siendo menos importante, las trabas burocráticas y políticas para una adecuada y necesaria regularización migratoria. La población que atendemos en las carpas y en las oficinas se caracterizan por ser mujeres, migrantes, madres de familia, jefas de hogar, que por lo general son familias numerosas, que han salido de sus países por cuestiones de violencia familiar y por violencias que también sufren dentro de sus países. Al venir acá cuentan con escasos recursos económicos y casi eh, escasos redes de contención familiares y aquí sufren a sí mismo diferentes situaciones de violencias y por eso llegan a la organización. Una experiencia satisfactoria como organización podríamos mencionar el caso de Hermelinda, una migrante latinoamericana de Bolivia que llegó a las carpas en extrema situación de vulnerabilidad y que gracias al abordaje integral por parte del equipo multidisciplinario de la organización hoy es una mujer totalmente empoderada, líder y referente para las mujeres horticultoras. Gracias a Munra yo conseguí mi documento, mi DNI porque yo tuve problemas con el trámite. Yo no me podía sacar ni salir a Bolivia porque nosotros no teníamos recursos para salir a Bolivia a hacer mis papeles. Y ahora, 2015, tengo mi documento.
Over the past two decades, the global population of forcibly displaced people has grown substantially from 33.9 million in 1997 to 65.6 million in 2016, and it remains at a record high. Parallel to this, financial inequality, lack of awareness, fear and anger towards asylum seekers has been growing rapidly in Europe. People increasingly fear that their home environment is becoming unrecognizable and undesirable. Populist demagogues have risen to harness these fears and to set people against one another. The streets of Warsaw are very much against immigration. However, studies show that it is not just popular resentment, but also elite racism that enables the reproduction of racism throughout society. Turkey is not immune to these trends. Today, Turkey hosts 4 million refugees. Indeed, Turkey hosted the largest number of refugees worldwide. With such a large refugee population, tensions are growing. With these tensions, Turkey too experiences violent forms of intolerance and xenophobia. Systematic disinformation, propaganda, ignorance, and political polarization lead to increased popular frustrations. Criminalization of refugees, their alleged cultural inferiority, labeling them as jihadists, illegals, dirty Arabs, mobs, rapists, these are parts of systemic efforts to discredit refugees. EGOM is a small, independent national NGO focuses a holistic approach to mitigate xenophobic and racist attitudes against refugees on several fronts. EGOM itself is a project to fight against intolerance and xenophobia. It works to increase dialogue, understanding, and mutual respect. What do we do? Dialogue and mutual understanding between refugees and host communities is crucial. EGOM advocates respect and avoiding stereotypes. EGOM is meant to be a preface and a conversation starter. Indeed, our World Refugee Choir Day concert is lauded as a best model for youth integration. As part of our holistic approach, EGOM targets media, academics, politicians, official stakeholders, and the public at large. EGOM works heavily with media. The Refugee Integration Tool and Index, developed by the Brussels-based Migration Policy Group and UNHCR for East European EU member countries, was implemented to teach the Turkish Republic the components of the Good Integration Program. To strengthen the NGOs helping refugees, EGOM took a leading role in establishing an umbrella organization known as the Turkish Refugee Council. EGOM and the Turkish Refugee Council continue to work hard to bring integration to the top of Turkey's agenda. We want all to understand that when conversation ends, violence begins. <laughs>